welcome to Chaos to Cured podcast. You're here with Jeffrey Freed and Kirk Patrick Miller. Today, we're going to talk about mental health and finance. So there's a, a bunch of different ways that this conversation can go. We're going to stay out of a lot of the politically charged areas, um, which would be, you know, hospital bills and how everything works and trying to find health care, that kind of stuff. What I, I'm referencing and what we want to kind of tackle are the real life realities that come with um, individuals that are not neurotypical minds. So uh, somebody diagnosed with ADHD, what are the repercussions financially for them? Um, but, you know, as a, I'll just give really quick examples for each one. So for ADHD, for me, a lot of times, if I don't check the mail, I forget, I'll miss a check will get lost in the mail, it affects your credit. Um, bipolar, you have mania, you have depression, there's times when uh, people will, during a, a manic state, go spend lots and lots and lots of money. During depression, they can't function, so they can't hold their job. Um, then you, ha of course, there's, so we can kind of span that. So what I want to tackle is really some, some common things that I'm seeing around the world that make this a little bit more uh, of a challenge. Um, and then we'll jump into some suggestions for things that have worked for me personally and things that I would suggest to anyone. But definitely if you're a parent, um, somebody, a friend, a family member, you, or you're the individual yourself struggling with a mental health issue. So, um, I mean, for me personally, um, uh, and I, I've dealt with this and it's extremely frustrating to watch your money go up and down, you know, it blows up and then, it, you know, uh, suddenly you have nothing there. Um, it's back and forth. Uh, so bipolar for, for me, before I, you know, had it fully managed and um, really was, the, it destroyed my finances countless times. Um, I know that there are other things that are also difficult for me um, with finances and that, that's hard on relationships. Um, with OCD, I have a problem with spending money too. So now that I have the bipolar under control, my OCD makes it pr practically impossible for me to let go of a single cent because I'm so scared all the time. So, you know, finance and mental health is, it's not usually talked about, but the two are so vital to understand and um, partially just for survival. If you don't understand how your mental health um, issue affects your spending habits or your your balance sheet, whatever you want to call it, um, it it's going to cause some problems. So, Jeffrey, I know that you've worked with so many people, and uh, a lot of them are you know um, well well to do, and they're searching for answers. Um, and I know you've seen these kind of patterns. So what's your take on, on just, uh, I mean, we can talk a little bit about how the system's a little bit rigged. I mean, the, the banks and everything between credit cards. So go okay. where you want to. Okay. I'll do it. Um, yeah. Finances are a killer, especially now with rampant inflation. Um, and, there is a huge problem with the people that I work with in finance, um, particularly the autistic ones. Most people have problems budgeting, but when you are nonlinear, because budgeting is very sequential, it's um, logical and sequential. You do a, a, you know, you do a sheet, expenses, money coming in. That is so not like the people I work with. Most of them are impulse buyers. They get a little bit sadder than most people because remember, um, even if you're not on the spectrum, but if you're non-neurotypical, you have more powerful emotions than do most people. So when you're in a euphoric mood or just a really good mood, you want to go out, you want to buy dinner, you want to buy dinner with friends, you want to buy drinks, and you want to have a good time and celebrate life. And you say things to yourself like, well, um, you only live once. Um, 
I got to enjoy life once in a while. But you don't, because if you go into debt, then your credit card bills go through astronomical, um, you start building up an astronomical amount of, of debt, you're screwed. Um, and logical people might still do it, but they're less, less likely to do it. They think in steps and they think naturally this will have a repercussion. The, per the people that I work with don't think like that. They, they're more impulsive. They, they tend to live in the moment and they get nailed on it. It's also really hard to get a good paying job. Um, if you're autistic or ADD, you may very well have had trouble in school um, and you aren't real good with other people. Um, you are sometimes, but when you get nervous and anxious, that goes out the window. So it's hard for interviews or killer. Um, and then when you get to a job, most, most jobs, it's all about socialization. If you work at an office, for example, most important thing is for you to get along and relate and have a friendship, friendships with your coworkers. These are people that I work with who don't do that very well. So they tend to try to work alone for themselves, and they're often very, very good at that. But there's a time period where you do that, where you're not making much money. Now, you may never make much money. And it's frustrating because you miss out on all the things that you really want to do. And it, that can be a leading source of depression. Um, what, I would, what I do is I hire, I hire somebody. Um, well, I have the money to hire somebody. Most people don't. To handle my finances for me, I have... Uh, a couple financial advisors who do it for free, but um, I also have a person who do I pay to help me with that sort of thing. I have an accountant. I pay the accountant. The accountant keeps me straight. I'm always aware of of taxes and w whether or not to get into an IRA or whatever. And most people don't do that. And it's really tragic because you could tend to, you, you tend to have an unsatisfying work career, not being paid what you're worth. That's most people's yeah. uh, lot in life. And then you get older and you haven't got any money and you struggle and you have to do without, which can be a huge source of depression. You know, um, when, when you're talking about some of that stuff, um, we often think of, going to the doctor, I need to pay the doctor because I have to get my health checked. I have to pay the dentist, you know, I have to get my teeth checked. And then it's, when it's like, oh, you know, I need to make sure I, my future is, you know, well taken care of. That's when we draw the line. We don't want to pay somebody. You know, it's, um, there's nothing wrong with putting money and investing it wisely. So, you know, um, for me, all the things that you just mentioned, there's a lot of barriers to entry and especially for myself. Um, I am a perfect example um, of a non-linear thinker. I didn't like the structure of school. I hated, I love knowledge. So I love the material that you could learn, but they kill it with, you know, the, the way it's taught and it's not their fault. The teachers are doing the very best they can. Even in college, you have to take all of these classes that are not necessarily things that I found, first of all, to be super valuable. I knew they had transferable skills, but I knew they weren't necessary to my degree. So I was extremely resistive to it. So that is, was a huge barrier for me is yep. just facing school, facing college. I was plenty smart enough and I have met so many brilliant absolutely brilliant janitors and some of these people that are doing jobs and there's nothing wrong with doing those jobs. I don't mean to make light of it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to state there's some brilliant, brilliant people yeah, that didn't make it through what we call quote the system. And what happens is then you, you don't have a degree. So, well, you can't get experience. It's, that's a whole different thing. And we should probably talk about that. But for mental health, when 
those people who do get through the school system, oftentimes that's the, you know, it, there's, I have to be honest, it's very common during college. Um, the, the stress of college, the fear of the unknown, the future, that's when I had pretty much my biggest, you know, meltdowns. And I believe that, uh, you know, actually, I don't believe, I know the average age for many of the mental health struggles is um, 25, you know, 25 to 29. It's that age range where people just, and I, I don't want to say break down. For me, it was, uh, I broke every, in every piece possible, but the, it, there were so many stressors and we've talked about that. And then you add on top of it, that inability to keep track. You mentioned that. So not being linear. So not having a budget. This is why I suggest, and I was going to say the same thing that you did, uh, doing a financial advisor. I'll make sure it doesn't have to be a lot of money. A lot of, of times it, it can be $10 a month. Just start putting it away at the, the probably the coolest app. I, I really like it um, is SoFi. It's a phenomenal little bank and you can earn 4% interest right now. Just sticking your money in their bank, just in their savings account, no fee. So put your money in smart places, but they allow you to invest every month so you can put like twenty dollars aside and they'll put it into like a slice so you don't even have to buy if you want like a good like stock like microsoft and it's you know 280 dollars and you only have ten dollars that's okay you can get a piece of microsoft for that ten dollars so i i think starting with small amounts not worrying about it um do it in stages so one thing that um uh, and i know we're kind of jumping a little bit to solutions. Um, there are so many struggles with the financial stuff. That's the easy part. So this particular formula um, has worked for a lot of people that I have, I've spoken to and, and worked with. And that's when you, when you get through college, um, let go of the idea of um, you having to have a brand new car, brand new house. Uh, um, don't listen to what society says. You're a loser if you live at home. You're a loser if you're you're smart with money. That is not being a loser. I just want to make that really clear. Yeah. Um, being intelligent with your money makes you smart. So if you have a good relationship with your family and you can live at home, why not save Absolutely. up the money? And people who don't understand that. And they are going to judge you for that. They're probably not going to be a long-term life partner that you're going to want to have anyway, because they can't see the future. Um, you mentioned it earlier on and you said, um, and I don't know if it was on this subject, but thinking in the moment and, you know, um, non-sequential um, thinkers think really way too far or maybe in off, I guess for me, I tend to think way too far ahead. And that does cause problems too. Or like you said before, I think in the moment, I don't think in between. And that did cause a lot of problems financially. So that's why for me, the step process, I'll, I'll jump back to it. Sorry, I got off on a slight tangent. So pay off, focus on being making every decision intelligently, just like uh, instead of a diet with food, you do the same thing with money. Instead of trying to like, you know, do something crazy with it, do something small, make intelligent choices all the time, pay off your credit card bills. Don't even use credit cards. I mean, that's why I think um, Mark Cuban, the, the, the owner of the Mavericks, I really, he gives some really great advice financially. And he says, don't even have, don't use a credit card. They are meant to trap you. So be very careful if you do use it, pay off the balance, simple decisions, saving a little bit, consistency in jobs. Consistency is key. Not how much you make per year, but staying consistent. That, that's something that was a huge struggle for me. Jeffrey, do, uh, you know, I have some suggestions for people. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, staying in a field, choose a field that really fits the person that you are. 
So understanding that if you have ADHD, you're, you know, if you pick a company where the environment is um, counter linear sequential. Yeah. So Jeffrey, you kind of want to be in. an accountant if you have ADD, most likely. No, absolutely. Oh my goodness. You know, it, um, I love programming like a computer, but a lot of times that's, that's challenging. It's, it's both creative. Um, you have to learn certain habits to make sure you comment on each line of code. It's the same thing if we're doing math and you have ADHD and I would go through and I would have writing that would circle the page. I mean, it never stayed in line. So I would get points taken off. And sometimes my answers were, or my work was done in all these different places. So, it, you know, knowing what your weaknesses are, what I did was I started always lining up the equal sign. So it's the same thing with the financial. If you see where you're bleeding financially and you see where you're struggling, um, you know, it's, I, I think part of the reason that we associate mental health and financial instability and struggles is because the, the mental health issues aren't understood early enough and they're not taken care of enough. They're not addressed soon enough. So the financial troubles mount up because the problem isn't known and there aren't a lot of people that address this. There aren't a lot of psychiatrists that talk about finances. No. Um, and it's important. So like for, um, for me, had I known much earlier on that, and I would suggest this to anybody that has, you know, bipolar as they're, they're finding the medication regimen that works for them, you know, um, put your money in, uh, you could do a, a, a trust, you can set something up with a lawyer. So, you know, it's done the way you want it, but you, what you're trying to do is make sure a certain amount of your paycheck goes away from you. You can't touch it. The yeah. thing is, is that what you want to do is you're going to want to grab that at stupid times. For me, it was like, um, I was, it was the first time I was in Vegas and I was playing roulette or something or, or, uh, craps. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. And I mean, you're manic. I just went to the ATM. I pulled out like $3,000. I was like my whole life savings and I blew it in like four minutes. It's, <laughs> It was, it's a perfect example of that, that impulsivity that comes with ADHD, with bipolar, the mania, right? Um, uh, definitely it happens with a lot of people around the spectrum, that impulsivity. So make sure you have it in a place. If you don't want to, if you want to be able to touch it, what I do personally is I have a secondary bank. And what I do is that's kind of a place that, if I have to move money from there, it's a secondary step. That's a pain. And what it does is it makes me conscious that I'm doing it. It makes me rethink my steps. Am I taking this money out for the right reasons? Um, oh, I don't need that. I don't need to get my money out. Um, oh, I do need this. This is an intelligent investment. It's, you know, I need a new phone. I've needed one because mine is like an iPhone 8. So I buy a new one. So I, I, you can, there's different ways. And that's again, Jeffrey, you, you mentioned you pay somebody, go talk to a financial advisor. They'll give you some good steps for free. And um, again, it's something that psychiatrists are not and psychologists are not trained to, to talk about this. And it's a vital thing for people to understand because so many of them, like you said, Jeffrey, when the jobs they are given, and this is something I, I, I have to get into this a little bit. It's so frustrating to see the most brilliant people on the planet sometimes, you know, um, doing menial Africa. work. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a travesty. And we should be utilizing the way they think to change this world for the better. Instead, we're putting them in places where they excel. I mean, they'll do it anything just beautifully if – you know, but it's not the places they want to be, or it's not the places they belong. And, um, you know, it's time for businesses to start seeing that there's opportunity just sitting there. It, there's yeah. all these brilliant minds and new ways of thinking, new ways of solving, um, you know, I don't even like the word problems, but 
coming up with solutions we've never seen before. And that to me is knowing that one of the biggest economic theories and is opportunity cost. When we talk about opportunity cost, we're losing opportunity because we are punishing people because they don't fit a school system or they don't fit our business system or whatever we've set up. And we're not, we're not only are we punishing them, but we're punishing all of humanity because we're losing brilliance. That's the title that we should, we should call this show the losing brilliance. Um, but I know it's about finances. It's frustrating. How many people have you, I'll let you talk for a second. I, I'd like to get your thoughts on it because it's, it is about finances and, it's not fair. No, I can't wait to comment on this. Uh, what happens with the younger people that I work with and have worked with is they can start saving um, and they're good. What they get nailed with is unexpected costs. Their used car breaks down and it's $1,500 to put a new transmission in or they get sick and they have the usual American um, pathetic health insurance, and they go to the hospital and their bill is $6,000, or they have to help pay for a parent or a child's illness, or they can't, they, the, the, you know, their relative can't work anymore. They got to subsidize them. And if you don't have much money, that's fatal. And that's what happens most of the time. The best laid plans are made and then if something like that happens and you can't really plan for that unless you're really smart really really well advised and or have extra money and i just see all these stats that say something like 65 percent of the american public american families don't have any money besides like one month paycheck they have like a thousand or twelve hundred or less and they Very have low. no they have no reservoir. They have no nothing to back them up. And that's simply because they're underemployed or underpaid. Most of the jobs in the United States that are highly technical or specialized, which these people should be filling, but the process eliminates them. Um, most of them, they're like $15, $20 or less an hour. You can't live on that. So Despite all the bad, I mean, you can do all the planning that you want and all the saving that you want. The bad luck can come along, or just life, and you're you're behind the eight ball, and you never get out of it. And another quick one is student loans. Um, I know people who are in their sixties um, who are doctors or lawyers, it's absolutely, especially doctors, who are still paying off their student loans at some absurd interest rate that the system is rigged against people who don't already inherit money or have money. And it's very, I mean, we can give all the good advice we want, but those people are gonna struggle. So I guess the best you can do is you can do what you talked about before, just save as, as much as you can, even if it's a little bit. And yeah, you can still get nailed, with an unexpected terrible bill. Quick example, if you want to get a, an implant and you have bad teeth um, or you break a tooth, well, you're down $6,000. Who can afford that? I've, oh, had it's, dentists, yeah. I've had dentists tell me hardly anybody, but they don't care, most of them, because there's a certain amount of people that can pay for it. It's a cruel society. Um, it's, it's very capitalistic. Um, and capitalism has its winners and its losers and probably more losers. Well, no, no, probably more losers than winners. And it's a cutthroat system. So folks that are underemployed, we're not only getting the benefit, losing the benefit of their potential knowledge and abilities, but they live lives of misery. They never get to do anything except survive and stave off bill collectors. And it's very common amongst the population that we're talking about. Most of them are not well off and most of them struggle and most of them can't realize their potential. 
because of our wonderful system. It's, you know, the, the frustrating thing is if you really look at it, it's pretty much like, you know, if we sidelined Einstein or Da Vinci or Michelangelo, I mean, uh, those people were also notoriously, I mean, um, if we go through history, we can see most of these people kind of fit um, in the DSM at some point. <laughs> you know, that's not a bad thing. It's not a knock on neurotypical minds. Um, I, I've heard some people get so offended when people say, oh, look at all these smart people that were bipolar. And they're like, what, so normal people can't be smart? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, why would we ever waste brilliance? We're just wasting it because a piece of paper, they don't have a piece of paper. Uh, I And I don't mean to offend all the brilliant people out there and that work in schools and, and, and colleges. I get it. I, if school, if college were free, I would absolutely go there all the time. I love knowledge. It's not free, number one. Number two, um, it's not efficient. It's not even effective anymore. A piece of paper does not mean that the person, it means that they can survive a four-year project. Let's be honest. That's what it means. And that's what companies want. They want somebody that can stick out of four, four years. They also want to know that they can speak English, that they can do basic math. I think that's some of the reasons that there's like requirements. But even some of those, who cares if they can't do math? If somebody can read a screen, if you can teach them, the most brilliant people on the planet are capable of doing amazing things. They don't need that much help. They just need some guidance. And that's why I like apprenticeships. I think companies need to take that up. You said there's it's rigged against us. So let's let's get into solutions for, for parents that have a child and you know something is a little bit, maybe um, it, things aren't working out. The teachers are all coming to you. Um, the other parents are saying this, your, your child is hitting them, it's exploding, can't control themselves. Let, let's, the moment before you even go and, seek a psychologist start an account for them just start putting 10 to 20 dollars a month in it um do and this is very simple if you have not the book is called the smartest investment book you'll ever read the guy wrote it forever ago he runs the or started some of the vanguard funds very simplistic he purchased some index funds um or etfs you can read about what those are I'm not going to get into them here, but start a fund for them. Assume that they are going to have some problems fitting into regular school. That means listen to our podcast that we did earlier about AI. Um, use ChatGPT to come up with great um, ways to help your child learn what they need to learn, which is going to be math, science, and logic. Then on top of that, start a secondary account for their college. If I were a parent right now, there's no way I would go the traditional college route. It's insanely expensive. I don't care how smart they are. It is just nonsense to go to an Ivy League school and spend a fortune on living costs and everything else out of state school. Why? What's the purpose? It's, it's four years. You get paid almost the same at all any of those schools. Um, now, when you get your master's degree, yes, absolutely. And I'm not knocking MIT or Caltech. I love those, the universities, amazing people come from there. Um, but a, why not do a community college for your first two years? In fact, why even have to go to high school? If you can get your GED, get your GED sooner, start your college degree younger. Why not? You can do community college, get your associate's degree, transfer your associate's degree to college. Well, all, let, all me your throw, let me throw Go something in. It. It's going to be an addition. Nobody cares where you started your college. No, absolutely nobody cares if you're if you're applying for a job. You go two years to a community, a local community college, and then transfer your last two years to MIT or Caltech. You're paying. If you go for two years, you're paying half as much as you would for four years. And it doesn't matter where you do your prerequisites. It absolutely doesn't matter. It's where you graduate. Um, that's a huge difference in how much money it's going to cost you. And, you know, it's like the kind of thing where I believe we can't predict the future. 
And I mean, what you're talking about is, is happening already is many, many people are doing exactly that. They're starting in a small school, inexpensive school, they do it online, and then they graduate, spend a year or two at a major university, and they have the, um, can you can build up, the, the real reason to go to a good school, whatever that is, like an Ivy Lake school, is for your connections. You get really good, um, you can get really, really good, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, yeah, I'm not going to get it, but um, you can you can get great internships. There you go, and because you you know you're coming from a school, you've met people that are in Wall Street or whatever, and that's the reason for the connections. Um, I and that's valid. Connections are huge. Legacy use legacy. I got into a good college because my father went there and my grandfather went there. I couldn't have gotten it on my feeble grades. Um, just by hook or crook, get those first two years and then find some place to graduate from that's prestigious if you can do it. Because that does pay off. Harvard graduates and Stanford graduates, I mean, there's no comparison. They make a, they, you know, they, they'll get they they'll make, start yeah. out making 160000 to two fifty a year. Whereas somebody who graduates from a local school isn't going to get that opportunity. So it is in some cases a good, a good investment for college, but they're way overpriced and it's beginning to tell. There's too many schools and a lot of them don't have any students. So it's going to correct itself. And you know what? Um, I think that's a really important part to mention. There's nothing wrong with doing that route. It's it's a it's really effective for some people. It was not at all effective for me. And the problem with when you don't fit that educational system, yeah, there well, are no right. opportunities. It's just ends. It is a barrier of entry to any field. They don't even care. They, it, it's literally a fascinating to, uh, you know, I've had the pleasure of speaking with some very successful individuals. And one, I remember I had a long conversation with and a great rapport. And all of a sudden, you know, he wanted to know, you know, well, he just assumed I was an MD. It was an assumption on his part. I never said I was, I wasn't talking about. You know enough, the, yeah. Well, and I was, you know, it was about uh, a, a subject I knew a lot about. And um, the moment he knew that wasn't true, it literally just went cold on the other end. And, you know, it after about five minutes of that, it w the conversation ended. I it was the oddest thing I have ever experienced because the rapport was there, was good. He was looking at the data that I was talking about, and it was clean and been analyzed um, independently by uh, another psychiatrist. We had, you know, data, all of it sanitized, of course. So it it's frustrating to see and to have experienced how many places shut you down literally even after they've had a good experience because they can't get over that piece of paper missing. Yep. No one wants to believe that someone can learn something. And oh, this happens all the time with people on the spectrum. They can learn something that took somebody else 20 years and they can do it in a year. And everybody gets angry at that. They get frustrated. They're, it feels unfair. But what they don't realize is that everything else in that person's life, there are other issues that they're paying for. Oh, yeah. Just because because they have perfect pitch that again, there's so many things and financially, like you said, it's hard. So I want the, I don't want anybody to feel hopeless. It's not that you can't get through school. It's not that you can't make it in. It's not that you won't have enough money that you won't be able to get a high paying job. The key part is, is if you're a parent of a child like this, prepare now, start. And then f listen to some of the things that the podcast we've done, we're literally telling you how to help with these things. So these don't become issues so they can learn through neuroplasticity, through reframing how they think, 
So, um, you know, Jeffrey, I, I know this is a lot, this is a, a field that you and I are not specialists in. So we're not giving financial advice. You know, we, we specifically said, seek out somebody that can help you with that. Um, are, are there some things that you want to finish off with? Do you have a couple of thoughts? I always have a couple of thoughts, sometimes even more than a couple. Um, <laughs> I guess the most important thing is to, if, if you know the game and what you may be um, faced with, you are way ahead of the average person. So the key thing is, yeah, it's really hard if you have um, what some people would call a learning, I'm not gonna say disability, a learning difference. Um, I will never say disability unless someone is really handicapped. Um, but if, if, you know, if you know these things, if you know to plan ahead, if you know what to look out for, that separates you from the board because most people will never know what's actually happening. They just react. But if you can plan, and I love getting a financial advisor and saving money regularly, you're way ahead of most people and you do have a good chance of being successful. You don't, I'm going to leave it at that. That's perfect. Always plan and do the best that you can and understand there's always setbacks. Like you said, I love that, you know, plan for set, some setbacks. And that's another reason to not live outside your means. Don't feel the pressure to show off. No one cares in the grand scheme of, of life. We all end up in a very humble place, regardless of how much money we have. And yep, the thing is, is yeah, so, you, you know, you can't bring anything with you. You may as well enjoy the life that you have. So don't, don't take the pressure. Um, don't let other people binge you into a game that you can't win. I like what your analogy there about knowing the game, Jeffrey. So I'll play along with it. So if you know the game, don't let other people pull you out of it. Play it the way you want to. And um, you can definitely uh, get ahead. I believe in that. So thank you to everyone for listening. Um, this is Cast the Cared Podcast with uh, Jeffrey Freed and Kirkpatrick Miller. Please feel free to reach out to us um, to help out in any way that we can. Thanks for listening, and we will be back soon. Bye. All right. Thank you so much for listening to Gas to Cared Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with everyone you know. And definitely like, follow, and subscribe. Certainly leave a comment if you'd like. Let us know what you'd like us to talk about the next time. Also, in our show notes, there should be direct links where you can follow us on our social media, as well as reach out to us directly. Thanks again, and have a great day. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed on Chaos to Cured podcast are the speaker's own. All discussion is based on our own experiences. We do not and cannot guarantee the accuracy or completeness of any information. Chaos to Cured podcast cannot give medical or health advice. All discussion is based upon our personal experiences and meant for general and educational purposes. This podcast is not a substitute for professional help or for diagnostic purposes for yourself or another. Cast Cured Podcast always encourages you to consult an appropriate professional.